I'm Lee Nish. I'm pastor at Sparks United Methodist Church. Welcome to worship. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to be with you today. I'm just about ready to catch a plane here at Reno Tahoe International Airport. I'm flying back to Orlando to spend the week with some colleagues who are all going to an expo exponential global conference to learn how better to extend our mission through church satellites into neighboring areas. And so uh, I'll be tied up this week, but in the meantime, this is gonna be a great worship service. Cindy Evans is here. She's going to present some of the meaning of the season of Lent and how to prepare us to make the best out of this most important season of the year. So stay tuned and let's learn more about the season of Lent. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. And I will fear no evil. My name is Lauren Acton, and today I'll be reading the scripture from both the Old and the New Testament. First from the book of Psalms, chapter 91. Here's verses 12 and 13. No, it's actually verses 11 and 12. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. But then 14 and 16, those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. And then in the Gospel of Luke, we have the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, 
returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So far, Jesus was turning all the devil's temptations away with words of Scripture. So the devil decided to try Scripture himself. And then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from him, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cindy Evans, and I'm really glad to be here with you today. We are approaching in the church time something that's called Lent. It's 40 days, if you don't count Sundays, so for those of you who are gonna get out your calendars, it's 40 days until Easter. And it parallels a lot that scripture for the day that you heard Lauren read today, that Christ was fasting in the wilderness for 40 days. It's an important time in the Bible, but I've learned it just means for quite a while. So here we are moving into Lent, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my experience with Lent. When I was younger, I really appreciated the opportunity and what I was taught is that Lent is a time of introspection. To consider where we are and where we're going, but also to remember who God is and what God has done for us in the gift of Jesus Christ walking amongst us. So when we turn to the Psalm for this week, Psalm 91, it concludes, you heard Lauren read the conclusion, but I'm gonna share it with you again. For those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Now, if you didn't hear it last week, when Blake was talking about the nature of God, he said the nature of God is love, not a characteristic of God, but the nature of God is love. And this scripture, I think, is a great one to meditate on while we're going into Lent. Because before we can look inside ourselves, we need to remember who God is and that we are God's creation. And after he created, God said, and it was good. So as you sit here, I want you to remember God created you and you are good. And when you choose to follow God, he is with you. Those who love me, God's looking for a relationship, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. 
So God doesn't just make promises, he covenants, and we covenant back. And it's when we're in that relationship that we begin to experience the benefits of that covenant. It's like a gift unopened if we don't build relationship. So let's look at Jesus. Jesus walked on earth to be God amongst us. And in the scripture this week that you heard Lauren read, we talked about Jesus in the wilderness. And he was there for 40 days. For those of you who are into numbers, Lent is also 40 days. But you can't look at the calendar because they don't count Sundays. I'm like, what a silly little church thing, huh? But it makes me remember that Sunday is always a special day and that we always remember what God has done for us. So when Jesus was in the wilderness, he was tempted. And what always surprises me is he was tempted by evil, the Satan, the tempter, whatever name you want to give to it, that that person, that, that tempter used scripture to tempt him. Well, that's just one of those great big conflicts that I just sit there and go, what? How can this be? If it's the word of God, how can Jesus argue with the word of God? And it makes me think about how we need to look at the whole picture and the whole relationship and the whole covenant. So when we hear, heard the devil tempt Jesus, and he said, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him, Jesus, on the pinnacle of the temple saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and to protect you. And on their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Do you know where that comes from? It's the two verses before what I just read to you from Psalm 91. That's a big struggle. The Bible is there for us to learn lessons but it is the experience of God and God coming and experience us to say, use it at the right time, in the right place. Find your faith and go with me. Remember that God is in love and when we're in relationship with him first, then things flow correctly. If we forget the first part, there's a bit of a dam in the river. Which brings me to my little story I wanted to share with you about the lint trap. I'm sure you have one of these at your house or maybe you don't. If you don't have a clothes dryer, I count myself blessed I have a clothes dryer. As I walked in, the wind decided to make this a perfect example because when I remember to clean it, it's ready to catch some more lint. But when I don't clean it, it gets pretty full and the dryer doesn't work as well. And I think, oh, I need to clean out my lint trap. I do the same thing in my day-to-day -day life and with my faith. Sometimes when things just don't feel right or I'm at, I'm at unease, I go, oh, maybe I need to pray about this. Maybe I need to talk to someone about it and see where we're going so that we can be more in tune with God's love and what God's will is for that moment in time. So that brings to me that little bit more story about the lint trap. When we had moved into our home recently, actually several years ago, soon after we moved into our home, we kept thinking maybe our dryer wasn't working so well. We would empty the lint trap regularly and check it, and yet the clothes just weren't drying like they should. Well, a couple of years later, yes, a couple of years later, we found ourselves painting the laundry room. And I said to my husband, well, what about that pipe that goes from the laundry room to outside? 
And he said, well, it, it could, but usually the lint trap does a pretty good job of catching the lint. I don't think we need to worry about it, Cindy. Well, I'm like a dog with a bone. And I said, honey, honey, can we just try? So we went to our favorite store and got a $2 little snake to go in the dryer vent. And you know, our pipe is probably about 15 feet long. So he did it at one end and we got a little bit out. And he says, but this isn't really anything that would cause the dryer to not work very well. And I, I said, I said, can we go outside and try it? Uh, our outside vent is about two feet away from our air conditioner, and this was a big ask. So here my husband is on the ground with the, the lint thing, snake going in, and we got some stuff out, and it was pretty cool, but it's really not enough to be making the clothes dryer not work well. Well, I may be the one with the dog with the bone, but my husband is the one with the tools, and he got out the leaf blower. Not my little battery powered leaf blower, but the plug in one. And we put that, he got, we got it wrapped around, put a towel around the edge and had it right there on the entrance from the house to outside and he let it go. And I said, oh, oh, let me try. He goes, oh, well, I'll go check outside. And he gets the little snake in outside and it was the lint monster that we got from that pipe. I don't know how many years it had built up. And I share this silly little story with you is because sometimes it takes a little more effort. And that's what Lent is about. So I want you to think about what's blocking your way. Do you need to do some spring cleaning in your own spiritual life? Are you so busy that you don't have a chance to worship when you're on Sunday? Or like me, I'm busy getting up for work. I, I work from home, I get up, I have coffee, I have breakfast, I go to the workroom. I don't take the time to pray, I just keep going. So maybe it's not something that needs cleaned out, but something new that you could try or put into your time. Declutter your schedule and make room for God. So as we Conclude our time together, I'd like you to think about the times where maybe you've had a special experience during Lent, and I encourage you to share it with someone else as we share our stories with others to sh share God's love.
Hello, my name is Nell Pizers, and I'm here to guide us in prayer. Earth to God, earth to God, come in, Lord. It's your people calling. We need your presence. So many things are going on in our world that seem far beyond our control. Wars in foreign countries that affect us, warlike behavior in our own streets, hate mongers sending forth their vile messages viruses spread across the globe, and we don't know whether to keep wearing a mask now or not. So many things causing worry, anxiety, and fear. Sometimes the load feels too heavy, Father. And we have our own individual fears. We worry about family. We have health issues and money issues. We stress out over the price of gasoline or whether or not we can pay for our groceries or prescriptions. We live alone and are afraid at night. We could take a fall and be bedridden. We worry that someone could steal our identity on the internet, or we fear rejection. These circumstances and many more rob us of our peace of mind. They erode our joy. They strip us of our confidence. Please send your Holy Spirit to move among and within us. Breathe his presence like a warm breeze on a cold winter day. Let us feel the warmth of your love. Let us know that you are running with us through life. We implore you to take away this burden of fear and worry and keep our reliance upon you. And now we most faithfully pray the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, my plane is delayed. My bags are checked. I haven't taken off yet, but I did have time to watch the online version of today's message. Cindy knocked it out of the park. I now have such a better understanding of the season of Lent. And in, in, in addition to that, during this week, I'm going to check out my Lent trap and try to discover if I am clogged up with anything that would prevent me from really discovering the wonders of this season that God has in store for me. So please come back next week. I'm gonna be here, I'll be preaching next week, and I'm gonna look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, be blessed, go change the world.
Hi, welcome to the service of Holy Communion. Again, my name is Lee Nish. I'm pastor at Sparks United Methodist Church. And I welcome you to the service where uh, we celebrate the Lord's table. Now you'll notice that I'm wearing uh, a robe which connotates that this is one of two sacraments in the United Methodist Church, the other being baptism. But we treat this table as the Lord's table. It's not my table, which means anybody can participate in receiving Holy Communion. And so if you are able to, it would be great for you to assemble just a very simple table at home, uh, perhaps a, a bit of juice, bit of bread. And because I like to make sure that I'm putting myself in the right frame of mind, I like to have a cross that's visible to me and also a candle that reminds me through the light of the candle that the, pre the, the Holy Spirit is present at this table. Usually what happens is we gather around this table and uh, uh, if you are celebrating this at home, you or others in your home may want to gather at this time as well. Again, everyone is welcome to this table. And so normally what I will do is to consecrate the elements where I usually remind people through what I call the institution of uh, the sacrament, the service, what the elements stand for. And then I consecrate them by praying over them. Once we finish praying, then uh, we take the elements, which represents Jesus's life in us. Jesus incarnates God's grace in us. And that grace lives in us and works through us as we greet others and interact and engage with the world. And so on the night on which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, turned to his disciples and said, drink of this, all of you. For this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Gracious God, pour forth your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered today and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may be the body of Christ redeemed for this world. Make us one with you, one with Christ, and one in all the world, so that we may be part of your redemptive plan for the world until Jesus returns and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Amen. You may now take and eat and drink. 